Ladies and gentlemen, now available via my ProWrestlingTees.com online shop, get off my TV. The perfect shirt you could be wearing every Monday night when we see the likes of Kane, The Big Show, Ryback, And among many others that we just can't stand to see on Monday nights, I now bring to you an available for purchase this weekend, starting today. Get off my TV, man. ProWrestlingTees.com slash off the script 1999. Get your new merchandise and support off the script today. Once again, that's ProWrestlingTees.com. Slash off the script. What is going on, guys? JD from New York here. is number 99 one away from episode 100 of the number one fucking source right here on youtube.com for everything wwe this is off the script the number one fucking podcast in your subscription boxes right here on YouTube.com. And this is episode 99, part number one for your Friday. And Jesus fucking Christ, what a week. We wanted excitement in 2016 for the WWE. They're on fucking life support. But everything surrounding the WWE seems to be fucking on fire. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't know what's going on in the WWE, but this week we got wind of yet a, probably the biggest blow to the WWE roster, and that is John Cena. John Cena is not going to film some movie. John Cena is not going to film some reality TV show. John Cena is not going on vacation with Nikki Bella. John Cena is going to be out six to nine months with a torn rotator cuff. He is gone. All plans for John Cena thrown out the window. He will not be at WrestleMania. And we're going to discuss it as the main story right now, right out of the gate on Off the Script for episode number 99, man. We're also going to discuss what I think the WWE will and should do for WrestleMania 32. I also got news on Brock Lesnar. I got news on what WWE plans to do with him in the Royal Rumble, and this just actually broke minutes before I turned on uh, off the script to record, I mentioned this on Joe Cronin's podcast, they were like, okay, yeah, it's a good idea, on Out of Nowhere, by the way, goons, every Wednesday live, 11.30, on Joe's channel, I discussed Roman Reigns being in the Royal Rumble, he's going to be number one, who's going to be number two? I mentioned it on Out of Nowhere, We're going to discuss it. We're going to discuss everything right now regarding Lesnar, seeing it. We're going to book WrestleMania, what WWE needs to do to get this thing back on the right track. Ton of news. A ton of news. Going to be an episode you don't want to miss. If you enjoy Off the Script, hit that thumbs up. I'm going to get that right out of the gate. Hit that thumbs up. I want this video at over 600 likes before I sit down to record part two for you guys on Saturday. If you missed anything about Off the Script last weekend, links down below. If you missed Out of Nowhere with Joe Cronin and I, link is down below in the description from this past Wednesday's broadcast. 
If you guys don't have your pro wrestling t-shirt of out of uh, off the script, I was gonna say out of nowhere. We should get out of nowhere t-shirts made. Hashtag get off my TV, man, with the silhouette of the big show. Official merchandise from JD, ProWrestlingTees.com slash off the script. Go out and get yours, man. $19.99. They ship internationally all over the world. $19.99. That's ProWrestlingTees.com slash off the script. And I'm still waiting for my fucking wrestle crate. Ed from Wrestle Crate got, got in touch with me, man. Something happened with my crate. I don't know what they're doing. They're trying to reimburse me. They're trying to get the thing situated. I wanted to do an unboxing this weekend, but I still don't have my crate. But you can still use my code. JD sent me instant 10% off from WrestleCrate.com. That's on the basic crate and the ultimate crate, whichever you prefer, man. You want your first crate? Use my code JD sent me. Great fucking product, and I hope to get one very, very soon for you guys to do an unboxing right here on Off the Script. Now, let's get into the news. Let's get into the news. Unbelievable fucking week. John Cena, hurt. Late breaking news as of last night when I got out of work. The end of 2015 was a rough patch for WWE with serious injuries to Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, and Cesaro. And yes, goons, I know, you can add Sasha Banks to that list. However, it looks like, which I'll discuss to, uh, sometime this weekend, However, it looks like 2016 isn't going to be much easier for WWE. On last week's Monday Night Raw, John Cena made his return to WWE programming and he challenged Alberto Del Rio for the United States Championship. Cena went on to lose the match due to interference from the League of Scrubs. The belief was that Cena would continue to chase Del Rio and the United States Championship and build to a match at the Royal Rumble, and he'd most likely make a stand in the Royal Rumble match, pro, uh, pr you know, proving to be a threat to Roman Reigns and the WWE Championship. However, that is all kaput now, according to a report by Dave Meltzer. John Cena posted the following on Twitter, indicating that he had suffered a significant injury we don't know where, we don't know when, but the report says that he suffered a significant injury. Some of you were actually tweeting at me, JD, this might be a troll. This might be an elaborate setup by WWE. Now, I don't know if WWE would go out that far when you got everybody under the sun reporting about this injury. That's how big WrestleMania is, and that's how big WrestleMania is going to be. John Cena played a vital part in WrestleMania, and now that he apparently injured himself, we don't know where and when, he's going to be out most of the year, and he's not going to be at their biggest event in company history. He's going to need major surgery. Rather upside down start to 2016 as tomorrow, I will head to Birmingham for shoulder surgery. Life's full of setbacks, but hashtag never give up. Now, PWInsider.com is reporting that John Cena is suffering from a torn rotator cuff, and he's absolutely going to miss WrestleMania 32. In fact, Cena will miss the next six to nine months. WWE's creative plans were for Cena to face The Undertaker in a massive match for WrestleMania. However, those plans are obviously not going to happen. WWE's creative plans... Uh, for Cena right now, they need to adjust everything. And as for their plans for The Undertaker, they don't know where to go as of right now. As of this morning, there is no return date, but John Cena will be getting surgery as soon as possible. WWE are completely redoing WrestleMania. Dave Meltzer is reporting on Wrestling Observer Radio the following uh, that following the news that John Cena has sold, uh, shoulder surgery, which WWE believes will rule him out of the April, April 3rd show, they are redoing the entire card of WrestleMania. They're going with the idea that he's not going to be there. Meltzer said, however, he did point out that Cena has demonstrated amazing recovery times in the past. There's always a slight chance that the same miraculous rehab could happen, but it's very unlikely this time around. Brian Alvarez 
also added that Vince has six or Vince had six matches for Mania a year in advance. They all fell apart. The reason for the recent um, you know, whirlwind of injuries is thought to be WWE's training style. Meltzer and Alvarez criticized the Olympic style weightlifting that goes on amongst WWE superstars. And this is a very, very valid point. Every time you see Cena in the gym or, you know, with a picture on Instagram of him training, he's always got these fucking massive weights that a normal man would look at and crumble. He's lifting these things like nothing over his shoulders. You know, the Olympic style weightlifting, according to Milton and Alvarez, um, is something that the WWE really needs to look into. It's perhaps uh, not a coincidence that sh so many shoulder surgeries have been taking place, but both Cena and Cesaro both lift huge weights and both are now out with shoulder injuries. The method of training that these guys do, combined with the bumps, we are seeing a lot of shoulder injuries, Melcher said. With so many stars out, including their biggest draw, WWE must now look at the training and wrestling style. Changes are needed. That much is obvious. Losing John Cena is an absolute hammer blow to the company, and if it's down to training, then this incident and everybody else's apparent injuries could have been completely avoidable. This is... Unbelievably breaking news, according to Dave Meltzer. This is exclusive news from Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez. Where does the WWE go from here? I don't know what's going on. I, I, I really don't. You know, this is on the spectrum of being completely unpredictable. And I love that, being a WWE fan. For the first time going into a Royal Rumble, we don't know what the fuck is going to happen. We don't know. We don't know what is going to happen at WrestleMania. We don't know which wrestler is going to be where on the card, or what they're doing, or what they're fighting for, what championship they're fighting for. On the other hand, these injuries to the WWE roster are absolutely crippling to the company. WWE will be without Seth Rollins... John Cena, Randy Orton, Cesaro, Sasha Banks is on the DL, Hideo Itami is on the DL, Sami Zayn was on the DL, right? You got Sin Cara on the DL now, Tyson Kidd's on the DL. You know, Daniel Bryan, according to WWE, you know, I'm hearing that he's medically clear, WWE still has him on the DL. Those are big fucking names. Those are big fucking names. WWE cannot afford to have anything else happen. So changes are definitely needed somewhere, and someone in the WWE really needs to examine this under a microscope. Is it the training? Is it the Olympic weightlifting that these guys put themselves through to get back into training and rehab and make themselves stronger? Is it the house shows? You know, the house shows, they're worthless to me. If it's not happening on live television, it's worthless to me. You know, the, 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 the WWE fans that we are, that I am, and everybody watching me, we don't give a shit about what happens at these house shows. These house shows are meaningless. These house shows are merely there for the WWE to represent themselves as a touring brand, as a touring act, like as if they're the fucking circus. How much money are they making with these ticket sales? You know, they're probably making a killing off the merchandise. I don't blame them for wanting to make money, but a house show is not needed seven days a week. It's not needed. Two or three tops. Give these guys days off in between. You don't need to be working these guys 330 days a year. You just don't. The overseas tours, these guys are tired. They're banged up. Ever since these guys have been starting the rigorous touring that they're doing all over the world, these extended shows, sometimes they do Monday Night Raw, and you have a, a house show, a split show, which was happening just a couple of weeks ago, a split show, house show was happening in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and you had Monday Night Raw going live on the USA Network. I mean, was that other show really needed? How much money did they, did they really generate from that other show? It's pointless. 
You don't need a house show every single day of the week. You don't. Monday Night Raw, Monday. SmackDown tapings, Tuesday. You know? And then spread them out. When's, your mo when's the most business? When's the most time people go out and enjoy themselves? The weekend. Saturday and Sunday could be house show days. You don't need to have house shows during the week. Spread them out. Decrease the number of house shows. Give these guys rest. How can they rehabilitate themselves? And how can they get over their injuries and these small nagging injuries if you're going to continue to put them out there and risk themselves and further injure themselves more? I don't get it. I just don't understand it. That's one aspect of it I never understood. What happens on live television is what is going to make WWE money. The house shows are fucking worthless. Absolutely worthless. And now Cena, WWE's biggest fucking draw, the number one guy in the company, going to be out all year. You have your former WWE champion Seth Rollins go out, out nine months. John Cena, the number one guy in the company, out nine months. Right there, that is absolutely brutal to WWE. On top of that, Orton might not even be seen until 2017. Daniel Bryan is out. Cesaro is out. Sasha Banks is out. When does it end? When does it end? And what is Vince McMahon thinking about this? All these people are to Vince McMahon are shiny new toys. Oh, look, John Cena, he's banged up. That's okay. That's okay. And you know what? WWE is fully to blame here. I don't feel sorry for them whatsoever because things like this always happen. Always. The potential for something like this is always there. And you are supposed to have a backup when this happens. And this is WWE's fault for not building a mid-card. For not building the guys in the mid-card to be ready for that you know, occasion when a John Cena and a Seth Rollins and a Randy Orton go down with an injury, there's no one else to plug into those holes. Who's going to give a shit about a Tyler Breeze if you're not building him up? Who's going to give a shit about a Dolph Ziggler when you have him losing every week and you don't build him up? Why are people going to care for a Stardust and a Neville? Nobody gives a shit about these guys because you have wasted so much energy on the WWE title and getting Roman Reigns over, like I mentioned previously, that you have neglected everybody else on the roster. Everybody. And now it's biting the WWE right in the ass. And I don't feel sorry for them. Hopefully someone in Stanford is looking at this and be like, you know what, we fucked up. We don't have a backup plan. We don't have anybody else that the, the audience wants to see. We don't have any time to build anybody up because we're fucking pushing Roman Reigns down everybody's throat. It's not the way to run the company. It's not. And hopefully someone in Stanford is seeing that. I've been preaching it for fucking months. Why isn't there anybody else readily available to plug into that spot? John Cena is gone. Who are you going to give us now? You've built nobody else up on the roster. You've made us genuinely not care about everybody else. The League of Nations, Neville. The only ones that I care about right now are Dean Ambrose and Kevin Owens and Brock Lesnar. That's it. Nobody else is ready to be plugged into that position. That's a fucking issue if you're a promoter, if you're anybody in the back working in the offices of WWE Creative. That's a fucking problem. And I don't see why and how nobody is worried about what's going to happen with John Cena being out. Nobody seems to be concerned. There's no reports of panic. There's no reports of... I can only imagine what is going on behind the scenes in WWE with the news of this injury. I don't believe it. So what does WWE do now? What does WWE do now? You know? Obviously, everybody was, uh, was up in arms about Roman Reigns and John Cena and them being in the main event for a passing of the torch type match at WrestleMania 32. Obviously, with the news of this injury, that's not going to happen. You know? Undertaker. Who do we do? Who do we put against the Undertaker now at WrestleMania? John Cena's gone. I wanted that match out of everything to happen. John Cena versus The Undertaker. That was the one match I was genuinely interested in. What happens now? I think I have the answer. I think this is the absolute best you can do 
for WrestleMania, what I'm about to give you. This is free information, WWE. This is free information. You have enough money to go out there and sign half of the fucking Bullet Club and probably buy the copyright to the name. This is what you need to do. Free. I live 20 minutes from Stanford. I can drive over there now and tell somebody directly in the face, this is what you need to do, bro. Main event. Triple H versus Roman Reigns. That is going to happen. It's going to happen. Roman Reigns is not winning the Royal Rumble. Roman Reigns is not walking out of the Royal Rumble with the WWE Championship. Roman Reigns is entering at number one. And no, clowns, Big Show is not number one. Nowhere in the last two weeks when the Big Show came out on Jizz TV did he say, I'm going to be number one in the Royal Rumble. Why would you do that? You know how many fucking goons I had in my comments? Oh, JD, you're wrong. Big Show's number one. What? Why would the Big Show come out and announce himself as number one in the Royal Rumble? That's pretty much saying, yeah, I'm fucking myself over by entering the Royal Rumble number one. Why would you do that if you're an active competitor who wants a shot at the WWE Championship? Wouldn't he come out and say, I'm going to be number 30? It doesn't work like that way, clowns. Roman Reigns is in the Royal Rumble defending the title. Vince McMahon, within the next two weeks, is going to say, Roman, you are entering number one. And I guarantee you, book it. Lesnar's going to be on Monday Night Raw. Vince McMahon, to stick it to Roman even more is going to announce Brock Lesnar as number two. And you know what? Brock Lesnar's not going to mind. Because legitimately and realistically, who's going to fuck with Brock Lesnar? Nobody. Lesnar's not going to fucking care. He's going to walk in there and decimate the entire fucking roster. He doesn't fucking care. But as a storyline, and to get people intrigued, can you imagine... Roman number one and Lesnar number two right out of the gate. That's great storytelling. That is absolutely brilliant storytelling. And you heard it here first, right here on Off the Script. Book it. Guarantee you. And I did mention it on Out of Nowhere. If you guys want to go reference that as well. But as far as WrestleMania goes, this is what you need to do. Triple H versus Roman Reigns. Triple H, to me, is going to win the Royal Rumble. He's going to come out and announce himself to the world, surprise to all, that he's going to be entering at number 30, and he's going to win the WWE Championship. There's going to be a screw job finish at the Royal Rumble. Whatever that might be, who knows? But there's going to be a screw job finish. So we got one match. Roman's going to seek revenge. He's going to overcome the authority. No better place for that to happen than at WrestleMania. Now, what about the undercard? This is where WWE really needs to fucking open up their eyes and realize, listen, Daniel Bryan's tweeting, Daniel Bryan is fucking Instagramming, Daniel Bryan tweeted a fucking picture of the Bullet Club and said, when will WWE clear me to wrestle? Daniel Bryan is probably drooling at the fucking idea of getting in the ring with Nakamura, with AJ Styles, and everybody else coming over from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Give this guy the opportunity to fucking come back. What do you do with Daniel Bryan upon his return? You bring him back to the WWE, and you pretty much thrust him into a program right before he left. What was he doing? He was with the Intercontinental Championship. That's the last thing he did. He gave up the belt reluctantly. He never lost the WWE Championship. He never lost the Intercontinental Championship. But right now, there's no reason for him to be in the WWE Championship picture. And the WWE won't put him there because it'll fuck up everything. So why not put him in the Intercontinental Championship picture? Kevin Owens versus Dean Ambrose at the Royal Rumble. If it's announced, which I'm assuming it will. Kevin Owens needs to win the title back. I don't know why they ever took it off of him, but he needs to be the Intercontinental Champion. He goes on to WrestleMania, and Daniel Bryan comes back and challenges for the Intercontinental Championship. 
I would like for that to be Sami Zayn. We had the idea of Sami Zayn being promoted to the main roster. We had an idea of Sami Zayn in the Royal Rumble fucking over Kevin Owens and getting some type of sweet revenge. Just a little bit on Kevin Owens for what he did to him down at NXT. But that's not going to happen. The WWE goons won't let it happen. Apparently Sami Zayn's staying down at NXT. So why not give us Daniel Bryan versus Kevin Owens? They will absolutely tear the stadium down in Dallas at WrestleMania 32. Bryan versus Owens for the Intercontinental Championship. There's match number two. You can go out and sign the Bullet Club and everybody else from New Japan Pro Wrestling. God knows how much they fucking paid for everybody. So what do you do? Kurt Angle is fucking retired from professional wrestling, which is bullshit. He's retired from TNA because nobody wants to fucking be associated with that heap of shit promotion. So what do you do? You sit Kurt Angle down in Stamford, Connecticut and say, listen, we want you back. If Angle is healthy enough, which I'm assuming and I'm hearing that he is, he's in good graces, he's in good health, he had all the surgeries he needed, he's fucking tip-top, he's ready to go. This is what I'm hearing. So what do you do? You go out and get Kurt Angle for the Royal Rumble. I don't know if that's possible, being that I think he will be with TNA over in the United Kingdom for his farewell tour. If that doesn't happen... You, you bring him back on Monday Night Raw or weeks leading up to WrestleMania and you have Kurt Angle come back and challenge Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32. There's no other match I would love to see than Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar. They would absolutely fucking tear the house down along with Brian and Owens. What an undercard, you know? But the, the only question I have is WWE really needs to fucking knock their heads together. I just don't see anybody eliminating... Brock Lesnar from the Royal Rumble. How is that going to happen? How are you going to eliminate this man and make it believable in the Royal Rumble? That's the only thing that I'm wondering about. Because I don't think Lesnar's going to win the title. I, I really don't. I mean, th there's no sense in him winning the title now. If you're building for Roman Reigns and Triple H, one of them is going to have the title because WWE is going to be reluctant or, or, or hell-bent, I should say, on keeping the title around Roman Reigns. You know? I think that's where they're leading. But how do you eliminate Brock Lesnar in the Royal Rumble? I don't know. I, I really don't know. But Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. I think that would be the absolute biggest draw. Dean Ambrose would drop the Intercontinental Championship to Kevin Owens. What do you do with Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania? Well... If my memory serves me correctly, wasn't Chris Jericho a partner with Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose? I forgot which pay-per-view it was. Uh, Battleground, if I'm not mistaken. And he comes to fight the Wyatt family as a surprise guest to team with them or uh, as a, a mystery partner. You know, and at the end of that match, Chris Jericho pretty much said, Fuck you to Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. WWE can build off that and have that lead with a great storyline with, with promos and whatever else they script for these two. I think Dean Ambrose and Chris Jericho would do wonders together. Have them in a grudge match for WrestleMania and make it fucking personal. You know? WWE wants to build Dean Ambrose as a major player. Jericho is back to give someone some type of rub. Give him the match with Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania and make it a grudge match. Make it this generation's... Shawn Michaels versus Jericho, and make it personal. Give it some heat. Give it some real emotion. And I would love to see that happen at WrestleMania. What do you do with The Undertaker? Well, well, this is where it becomes interesting. The Rock. I don't know what the WWE has planned for The Rock. I doubt that they are announcing The Rock this early for WrestleMania. And they don't have something huge planned for The Rock. Now, one of my predictions was that The Rock could potentially win the Royal Rumble. The Rock could win the Royal Rumble and go on to fight Roman Reigns at WrestleMania for the WWE Championship. I don't think that is likely at this point in time anymore. So what do you do with The Rock? Well, um, uh, you know, the dead man, the Undertaker needs an opponent. Why not give us... 
one match that we would never see at WrestleMania, or that we haven't seen at WrestleMania. The Rock versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania. That would be a fucking spectacle. For the mere fact that The Undertaker is at WrestleMania in front of 100,000 people in his hometown, The Rock is there to come back and challenge The Undertaker in his home state. Does it need anything else? No. You got your fucking star-studded match in The Undertaker versus The Rock. And then The Rock, if the WWE wants to use him later on, help Roman Reigns win the WWE Championship again from Triple H and give him his WrestleMania moment. Roman Reigns' time is here. And if you want to get fucking risky with it, have Roman turn on The Rock. Have him become heel. I know I'm going a little bit out there, but WWE can certainly play up that idea as well. As far as the Tag Team Championships go, I don't know where the WWE is going with the Tag Team Division. There's really no credible challengers for the New Day. I mean, everybody else in the division is either very, very boring and they're not catching any momentum. So I don't know what the WWE is going to do with, it, with the New Day. They, they certainly need some new blood in the Tag Team Division because right now... It's not doing anything for me at all. But if WWE wants WrestleMania to be successful, right there. I mean, there's nobody else on the fucking roster that you would consider a big name. If the WWE wants to go out and get Bill Goldberg, I highly doubt that's fucking going to happen. But out of what they have to work with right now, that is the most logical. That is the most logical. And let me know what you guys think about that. Seriously. And before I end this week's Off the Script for Part 1, I will say this. There are now reports, and I mentioned this on Out of Nowhere, well before this was reported on Wednesday. There is going to be a lot more of Brock Lesnar on WWE television over the next few months. First, The Beast Incarnate is returning to Monday Night Raw this Monday. He's scheduled for the Royal Rumble, advertised for Fastlane, and is an obvious lock for WrestleMania 32 in Dallas. After injuries to Orton, Rollins, and now John Cena, WWE is seriously going to need Lesnar to carry a lot of the load over the next few months. His plans for the Royal Rumble will no doubt come flying out of Paul Heyman's mouth on Monday night. But his plans may be revealed in the latest report from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter and Dave Meltzer. According to Dave Meltzer and a recent television commercial, Lesnar is expected to be a participant in the 2016 Royal Rumble match. Now that Roman Reigns officially will defend the WWE World Heavyweight Championship in that match. The idea of Lesnar in the Royal Rumble match is a really interesting one. It's a foregone conclusion that Roman Reigns will be number one in the match to start the Royal Rumble. But a betting man would put a shiny penny on Vince McMahon and the authority making Brock Lesnar the number two entrant in the Royal Rumble. There is no word on plans for Lesnar to win or whether his elimination would lead to a feud taking Brock through Fastlane and then WrestleMania in April. We'll know much more after Monday Night Raw. If this happens, you know where you heard it first. JD. It's going to happen, and that, to me, would be absolutely brilliant booking. Brilliant. Back in the day when WWE had the Royal Rumble in January, I'm always excited because deep down it's still my favorite match in all of WWE. It's my favorite pay-per-view of the year. I always love the anticipation and the suspense and the unpredictability of who would be number one and two. The Royal Rumble where it concluded with Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. Those were the last two guys in the Royal Rumble. If it was, I think it was 2007. Correct me if I'm wrong. And The Undertaker won and eventually went on to WrestleMania to win the WWE Championship. The following year, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels drew number, drew number one and two. The unpredictability of that had everybody fucking going crazy and nobody expected that. What a twist and what a turn that was. I love the unpredictability of number one and two. But this year, I would certainly bypass that. And Roman Reigns is more than likely going to be number one, being that he has to defend the fucking title against 29 on the guys. Why wouldn't he be? And what better way to throw the entire fucking thing for a loop and give this guy the biggest fucking hell ever 
Have him struggle mightily through the Royal Rumble. What better way than to announce Brock Lesnar as number two? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And if, if it doesn't, that's, uh, 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 that's stupidity on WWE's part because I would absolutely love to see that. And I think that storytelling would be fantastic inside the Royal Rumble. But that's all I got for Off The Script. Let me know what you guys think down below. Book in WrestleMania, man. What do, I, what do you guys think? Am I, am I losing my mind or am I talking sense to you guys? I think I'm talking some sense. Everything you need is in the description down below. Make sure you guys are following me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And tomorrow, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about the Bullet Club. I don't know anything about New Japan, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. I don't know anything about fucking uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. I don't know anything about Doc Gallows in, in New Japan. I know, his, I know his career in WWE. I don't know anything about Carl Anderson. I don't know anything about what AJ Styles has been doing over there. Fuck, I don't even know anything about the Bullet Club. But... We will discuss what I think the WWE, the top two things WWE should do with the Bullet Club. If they don't go to NXT, what do they do on Monday Night Raw? If they go to NXT, what do they do down in NXT? We're going to discuss that in depth right here on Off The Script. Do not go anywhere, man. It's going to be an absolutely explosive weekend of Off The Script. You do not want to miss it. I'm JD. Hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you guys think about it. In the, in the comments down below. And make sure you guys check the description for everything you guys need as far as t-shirts, Twitter, YouTube, everything you guys need is there. I'll be back on Saturday. Until then, thank you guys for watching. This is JD, and I'll see you all on Saturday morning.